right here, we have knife cut noodles. It looks amazing. Look at this. Wow, amazing skill. In this ultimate Malaysian street food marathon, we're exposing a side of Kuala Lumpur street food you've never seen before. But first, let's back up. Kuala Lumpur, it's a huge city with a lot of food. That's the good stuff. Food from folks of all different backgrounds, melding into one delicious cuisine. Right now, I'm here with expert noodle cooker, Sunny. Sunny, yeah. My name is Sunny. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, we can go together. We could, where are we going? <laughs> Strong influences come from Malay, Chinese, and Indian cooking. Mm. And you'll find all three taking shape as some of Southeast Asia's most delicious street food, costing only a few bucks. That's delicious. All the way to high-end buffets Whoa. and restaurants serving fine dining delights. Oh, my God. That is 10 out of 10. That will fill your belly and drain your bank account. This burger right here is 75 bucks. In this series, we'll experience the best Kuala Lumpur's food scene has to offer. And it all starts here. Right now, we're in SS2 PJ. At a humble street food market where the flavors are anything but modest. Everything here is super affordable. So affordable that I'm going to challenge myself to spend $100 on street food in one go. Is it too much? No. Okay, she said no. Let's see if I have what it takes. All right, first of all, from here all the way over to here, you have people lined up for this place where they're serving herbal steam soup. Is the soup made out of steam? Is it just steam? I don't know. It seems like a popular item. Come with me. There's way more here than just steam soup. I see all kinds of plant life. I see fish. I see seafood. Actually, the only thing I don't see is steam or soup. This place is a mystery. I'm going to keep moving for now. Plus, there's a very long line. Those people look like they get very angry if I cut in front of them. this way, it has been decided that today's first stop will be Fish Head Noodle. I'm really liking the names of these shops. It is right to the point. It kind of reminds me of the name of this show. Best ever food review show. No mincing words, no confusion. If you look over here, you'll see something very special. This, it's like little slices of stingray. Here it is, stir fried stingray. You can also pronounce it like this. I will not. I'm gonna see if I can order this, but even more importantly, I'm gonna see if they will let me film how it's made inside. The man who is in charge is right here. Yes, stingray please. That is 13 pounds of stingray. All right, we're heading back into the kitchen. This is where the magic happens. Step one, he's got his cutting board here. He's cutting it into an even thinner filet. Gives it a little bit of a dip, and that is ready for the next step. He starts with a base of turmeric powder. He's really an artist, and that is his canvas. And then he leaves. Uh, leaves to get some leaves. Hit the banana leaf with a little bit of oil. Then the stingray goes on top of that. So the stingray is not getting that direct heat. He puts a heavy weight on the end of the tail, and then that is just gonna hang out for a little bit. So guys, here are our fish, and then right here, that right there, that's pure flavor. Just want to bottle that up and sell it. Mmm. No? Okay. All right, he just gave mine another flip. Look at the color on there. He puts it back onto the banana leaf, and then now we've got this sloppy mix of onion, of sambal, of mystery sauce. That is going to go on top as well. From here, a kumquat, another kumquat. Boom. Our first meal, it's right below me. The best part is that this is seafood, so this is going to be really expensive, and it's going to get me to $100 very quickly. What's the price you're asking? $6.60. It's actually not that expensive. No. Right here. Boom. Kumquat. I'm going to give it a little bit of a squirt. Oh, wow. That's a juicy one. My God. This this looks good though. It just looks like any other type of firm fish filet. It's got that sambal on the outside. Let's go for it. Yeah. Oh, that's actually delicious. Ah, oh, it's a little spicy. The sauce is a bit acidic, intense, and harsh. The fish texture is between flaky and mushy, but in general, I do find stingray to be a little bit on the mushy side. And for being a rather mushy fish, this is delightful. That said, we have a lot more food to try. Let's keep moving. Behind us, something that looks familiar and forward at the same time. This is called classic Hainanese Western food. I know Western food. To me, this looks like somebody watched a bunch of Hollywood movies, and this is their idea of what we eat in the USA. We've got steak, which looks more like a chicken fried steak. We've got rice, and then we have spaghetti, and we have snack. Apparently, it's the fourth food group. I'm not going to eat here, but I am very entertained. I do like it. I might come back later. Our $100 challenge continues. Right behind me, Penang Mi. It means Penang noodle. There's two types of noodles here. We have Goreng. That means fried, and Rebus means boiled. Now, I sound smart. I learned that five seconds ago. Here they have a big noodle variety, but I'm interested in the Char Kyu Yao. This is a rice noodle that is fried. We're going to go into the kitchen and see how it's made. All right, right now I'm here with expert noodle cooker, Sunny. Sunny, yeah. My name is Sunny. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, we can go together. We could, where are we going? <laughs> we could go together. Partnership. All right, so Sunny here is about to be 
begin our dish and it starts with this beautiful flat rice noodle. He fires up the wok, hit it with a little bit of grease, some garlic, and those shrimpies are going in next. Some Chinese sausage going in next, chili, and the rice noodles, soy sauce, and some mystery black sauce, more chili sauce. This man is working his magic and this looks very nice. Green onions, crack an egg, we've got some bean sprouts going in next. These noodles will be very easy to break apart and turn to mush, but he's very sensitive the way he deals with these noodles. Oh my lord, that's a lot of food. We've got food number two right here. Oh my gosh, it looks incredible. I mean, this guy is a maestro because if you're too aggressive, if you're like a 20 year old who hasn't seen his girlfriend for six months because he's been deployed, he just got back home, you're gonna destroy the noodles. But if you're old, seasoned, wise, and patient like this man, then you gently caress the delicate noodles. You know how to handle your noodle. What? All right, I lost the analogy somewhere, but you get the point. It's oily, it's porky, there's soft noodles, there's crunchy bits, it's spicy. Oh, and it's like peanut buttery too. Mm. The value here is unimaginable. For this plate right here, $1.90. You can't even get instant noodles for that in the USA anymore. It is a symphony of textures and flavors, but this is not getting me much closer to my goal. I'm still over 90% away from my goal at this point. It's gonna be a long night. We have come to our next location behind me, a food I'm very excited about because here they are serving omelets, but it's not just any type of omelet. Now, you've heard of a variety of omelets, I'm sure. The meat lover's omelet, there's the Denver omelet, that's a good one, but how about an omelet filled with oysters? That's right, a food that most Americans can't even decide if they like. It's gooey, it feels like a loogie in your mouth. Well here, they're taking that ingredient and they're putting it into an omelet, let's see how they do it. She's filling up the stainless steel bowl with like 10 oysters for one omelet. What's this? A sofra. Well, a type of flour I've never heard of before. And then she puts in three eggs, she mixes that up a bit. She hits this giant pan with some oil and then down with the omelet. Just look at all those chunks of oyster inside. She is corralling the egg, begging them to come home, getting them into one big chunk. In no time at all, that is turning a beautiful golden brown. It is time to plate that up. This is enough eggs for a small family. A little bit of chili on the side and that is ready to go. Boom, food number three right here, the oyster omelet coming in at $3.20. This is a dish with an ancient history, I believe. I've seen these before even in Taiwan. But long ago, some brave soul got so long ago, some brave soul thought to combine oysters and eggs, and it's been a romance ever since. I'm gonna go for a big bite without the oyster. Look at that. Gooey, oily, shiny. Oh, it's delicious. She has a giant cast iron skillet and it's adding tremendous flavor to the omelet here. That's just egg, who cares? But right here, oyster, oyster, oyster. Alright, here we go. We've got the oyster on top, it looks gorgeous. Oh, they're delicious. It's not weird at all. It's a little seafoody. It's not like a soft, gooey, raw, briny oyster. In fact, when she cooks them up, they really shrink down quite a bit. It's like eating a vitamin. Mm -hmm. There's some hot sauce. Ooh, sour, hot, like a shot of hot, wait, wait, like a hot, wait, like a nice shot of whiskey. Just warms you up from the inside. This is awesome. We have a lot more work to do. Let's keep moving. We have come to our fourth location right behind me. Here they have a couple of unique items. First of all, seafood and then a strange fruit salad. How does it go together? It doesn't. Let me show you. Our first seafood species. They're known as blood cockles. Actually, every time I eat these, I talk about the fact that they're illegal in the USA because uh, you can get sick and die from them blood cockles. They are called that because they have a substance known as myoglobin. It's the same liquid inside of a steak that looks like blood. Is it blood? No. Come take a look. Do you dare me to put my finger? Oh, oh, oh. closed for business. That means they're fresh. I'm gonna order these and we're gonna go in the back and see how they make something called rojak. Hello, Mr. Lee. Yeah. Right here we have some blood cockles. Let's do your thing. You want to boil? Boil, yeah. Boom, he puts them in the basket right here. He puts the blood cockles in for a short time and soon that's gonna be ready to eat. So he just asked me, do I want them medium or what? Or pretty cool. I don't know, I wanna play with my life. I'm going medium. So it's finished? Yeah, finished medium. Okay, right now he's creating a delicious chili sauce to go with our cockles. Hit it with a little bit of peanut, a little bit of yeah. sesame oil, and that is ready to go. But first, rojak. Start with a pineapple. Cucumber. Ugh, cucumber. I feel like I've been tricked. Oh, but his cutting skills are amazing. Right here we have a big old turnip. Ooh, that's my favorite. Right here, a little bit of mango. He puts in some gravy, some chili sauce, some crushed peanuts. So right there we have some prawn paste. That is quite a unique combination of flavors. He takes all the fruit, he puts it in. Some sesame seeds next. Give that a little bit of a mix. He puts it on the plate. Then he puts on some sort of a cracker and some more peanuts. Thank you, sir. Let me look it up. Why are blood cockles illegal in USA? Blood clams are regulated by the US Food and Drug Administration because these animals can live in anoxic environments. Well, how about, wait, what's that mean? 
and therefore can pass along diseases such as typhoid and hepat oh, yeah, hepatitis. That actually sounds pretty bad. Well, let's see what happens. Step one, cockle. Grab it. Uh, the only way to really get this open is to get your fingernails in there and really like pull it open. Um. Oh, I finally got it. Oh, you can see this part is gooey. It looks like it's hardly been cooked at all. And that is the myoglobin I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, it's like a crime scene. Look at that, that is the blood. Oh, what am I doing? I need to see the title now. Most dangerous seafood in Asia. This is a concoction, a hot sauce mixed with so many different things. I'm hoping that kind of coats it and kills whatever hepatitis is still on there. All right, cheers to typhoid. It's a very nice dipping sauce. Spicy, hot, coating my throat. A little bit nutty too. There's no seafood flavor whatsoever. It's robust, it's thick, it's almost chewy. It's like an oyster if it was flexing its bicep. Oh, this one is like mango color. I've had it with the sauce. I need to have at least one with no sauce. Cheers. intense. It almost tastes like blood a little bit. That is wild. I forgot I should get one for my wife. She would love this. Hey, what the hell? What's this dude? Who are you? That's not my wife at all. Have you been here the whole time? I bet she's in the bathroom. Classic wife. All right, next we have this right here, the roja. I'm gonna mix the elements about. I'm not a big fan of cucumber, but it's covered with so much stuff. I'm gonna try it. Let's see if it changes my mind. Cheers. That's actually not that bad. What the heck? This sauce is magical. Let's try some other stuff. Pineapple, mm, mango, mm. and then he put turnip in there. That was not even a fruit. Mm, this is pretty awesome. Everything is coated in this delicious sweet glaze. It's thick, it's full of crushed peanuts, and then of course, right here we have prawn crackers. I'm gonna hit this prawn cracker with some fruit. Cheers. Oh yeah, very satisfying, fruity, overly sweet, it's ridiculous. I'm gonna step out the door and go to another nearby market where we're gonna try some more authentic Malay food. We have come to a new outdoor market just a few steps away from where we just were. And this place has a completely different vibe. It's less busy than the other place. It's less lit than the other place. Behind me, a food that looks fascinating. I've never seen so many fish cakes since the last time I was in Korea. We have fish in ball form. We have fish tablets, crab legs, bigger fish pieces, oblong fish, fish that looks like little sticky notes. I don't know. The point is, there are many different types of textures and flavors when it comes to fish cakes here. But they're mixing it with something really special. It's a round type of noodle and a noodle I've never tried before. Oh, okay, so here's how it works. You take what you want, you put it in the bowl, and then they're gonna cook it up for you. This looks like a yummy type of wonton. This looks impressive, firm. This is a pepper stuffed with fish cake. Right here we have a multitude of balls. Fish ball, fish ball, other fish ball. I think that's enough. Is it too much? Okay, she said, no. So that means it's just right. So the next step is to put in that fat white noodle. Then she reorganizes my amazing work. What did I do wrong? Cut the noodle up into small sections. Cut the balls. Oh no. Basically, everything is gonna get cut down into tiny little pieces, so it's gonna be much easier to eat. This is going inside the big net, in some hot water. Back over here, the wonton is getting also sliced up. The wonton contains fish inside. Take a trip back, that is fully blanched and cooked. Boom, put it on the plate. Look at that colorful mess, it's beautiful. Oh, right now the sweet sauce going on top. Some chili, some sesame oil. Hit it with a little bit of sesame seeds, and that is finished. Thank you. Right here in front of you for $2.50. Come and take a look at this. I don't even know where to start. First of all, she cut my balls in half. I do take that personally. She should ask, right? I mean, you can't call that a fish ball anymore. It's a fish half sphere. Anyways, let's try half a ball. Mmm, it's so peppery. I thought this was gonna be a sweet, like syrupy glaze. So far, it's just salt and heat. Woo, and that fish, it definitely tastes like a fish cake. Mm. I got some of the sweet part now. Right here, a beautiful fried wonton wrapper with a fish cake stuffed inside. Mm. Crunchy, greasy, delicious. Right here, this is that noodle. It's like a roll of toilet paper. It's like what my hotel bathroom's gonna look like real soon. A little bit spoiled, a little stained. But it also looks delicious somehow. Let's try it out. Mm. That's nice. No spice in that, even though it's covered in that sauce. It's super soft, it has almost no bite to it. Last of all, a pepper stuffed with fish cake. Same fish cakiness, but with what tastes like a bell pepper around the outside. This right here is like the ideal drinking food. All in all, I'm a big fan. Let's see what else we can find outside in this dark, mysterious area. Our next stop right here, Nasi Lemak Uttara. Here they have ayam goreng, barem, 
Baron pot. Just sound it out. You'll get close enough. This is, I would say, probably the national dish of Malaysia. Coconut rice. But you don't just eat the rice alone. You get some badass fried chicken to go with it. Boom, right here. Freshly fried chicken. It has just come out of the fryer. You can see it looks insanely crispy. You can see lemongrass on there. It looks fragrant. It looks incredible. That's not what we're here for. This place is also serving burgers, Malay style. They have a few different choices of protein. But I asked them, what is their most popular protein here for their burger? They said lamb meat. Let's see how they do it. We have our two lamb patties right here. Hit it with a little bit of butter. Then he cuts each lamb patty a little bit. Over here we have the bun that gets a couple of pickles, some onion, lettuce, and chili sauce. Boom, egg. Wow, look at this. I never knew a single egg could cover so much surface area. Oh, and then he puts a patty inside the egg, hits it with a little bit of pepper, he hits it with that special sauce, and then Worcestershire sauce. Some cheese, another patty, and then he wraps the entire thing inside this egg. Nice. Throw that protein monstrosity on the bun, hit it with some ketchup, some mayonnaise, and then that is gonna get wrapped up, and I will see you at the dinner table. It's $2.40 for everything you see piled up right here. My favorite part is that he took a single egg and he basically, I don't know, give that man a big enough grill and he will wrap an egg around the globe. I'm scared to touch it because it's so sticky. It's like me in the summertime in Vietnam. Ooh, steaming still. And let's try it out. First of all, this thing is sauce to the gills. The sauce is sweet too. That's like a sweet ketchup with sweet mayonnaise. Every time I take a bite, all the patties start to slide into a different direction. If you take a close look right here, you can see that nice double layer of laminess. Cheese, egg layer. Some random guy just brought me clams. And then someone hushed him away. Little does he know, I already have hepatitis. Another bite. Patty. It doesn't taste beefy, but it doesn't taste lamby. But there's something satisfying about a burger that's just meant to be kind of sloppy and nasty and in your face. This is not a gourmet French burger. This is a street burger. I gotta say, I like it. Here's the thing, guys. No matter which country I go to, I try to hit the $100. Today, it seems like we're not doing great so far, but there's one more place we could go to. One place that might break the bank. Let's move. We have come to our final location because after this, I cannot fit any more in my body. This place is a whole facility dedicated to durian. For folks in the USA, there's a good chance you've never even heard of durian. But here in Malaysia, they do durian unlike any other country. The first time I ever tried this fruit, I was in Vietnam. And I gotta say, I liked it. In Vietnam, I can walk out my front door, walk maybe 100 yards, and I can buy one for uh, 10 bucks. Here, durians can cost up to 30, 40, 50 dollars for one fruit. That's insane. So I'm gonna try to pick out the most expensive durian they have here and see what sets apart Malaysian durian from everyone else in the world. Boom, I got Kevin right here. Yeah. Kevin is a durian expert. Right now he's gonna point out to me what durian I should be getting. This, uh, black thorn. The black thorn. Okay. The thorn is a black here. Yeah. So this is called a black thorn durian. Here's the thing, they don't just have one kind of durian here. They have many different brands, many different species. Oh, he's just cut it open for us here. Oh, wow. This is unlike any durian I've seen before. He's just put my durian here on the scale. How much does it cost? It's uh, 142. 142, I'm told that is roughly $28. That is wild. Can we uh, sit down and try it? This place is wild. There's literally people coming here to celebrate their birthday with durian. Now, I'm gonna glove up and try it out. This is gonna be the most expensive durian I've ever tried. I wanna get a big chunk though. Oh, look at that. It's known for being kind of custardy, soft. This is a texture a lot of people hate. Oh, that's the good stuff. My God. Mm, oh, man. It's custardy. It's almost cheesy. It's intensely fruity. It's smelly. You taste it, but you also experience it up through your sinuses as you're eating it. It's like it's fermenting in your mouth as you're eating it. That being said, does it seem wildly better than the ones in Vietnam? I would say it's a little bit sweeter and the texture is a bit softer and gooier. So this is our most expensive food of today by far. But is it enough for us to get to $100? Let's add up everything and find out. The answer, adding, adding, is no. Now, I could have cheated at the end. I could have just bought like six durian. I didn't do it because I respect you. You feel the respect? Here's the thing. I genuinely tried, but this country has some of the most affordable street food of any place I've been to. Spending $100 on the streets feels next to impossible. But next, I'll attempt to spend over $1,000. And this time, I'm not missing my mark. So what's the perfect place to exchange your cash for luxury eats? Right here at St. Regis Hotel. 
<laughs> here, we'll indulge in the most opulent accommodations. Right here, we have the biggest room service order I've ever had in my life. We'll savor Michelin star dining. Mm -hmm. That is decadent. And I'll aim to spend over $1,000. But is that possible in the country of Malaysia? Honestly, maybe not. This is $1,000 dining in Kuala Lumpur. And it all starts with the most important meal of the day. Right now, it's 8.30 a.m. The breakfast buffet is open for two more hours. Let's go check it out. Fancy. <sighs> Every time I do that, I think I'm gonna lose an arm. So we are headed to the brasserie. Right behind me is the start of this buffet. Outside of the breakfast buffet, they start with all the boring stuff. They got meat, they got cheese. Over here, we're moving into the bakery section. Look how highly organized it is. Right here, fruit section. I'll be honest, I don't get that excited by the fruit section. This is what I care about here. This is the noodle section. Here, they have three different types of noodles. They have an egg noodle, they have a flat rice noodle, and they have a vermicelli. As we move forward, we get into the Chinese area. Boom, take a look at that. That looks like it was choreographed. This was not planned out at all. Delicious steamed dim sum for breakfast. Right here, we we have all types of unique belay dishes from around the country. For example, that is oxtail soup, sambal satong. This is migore. Whoosh. Take a look at that. This is like a little noodle cake. That looks awesome. I'm definitely gonna be getting that. And this gravy is what goes on top of that. It looks delicious. Then we have the fried food section right here. I like that in case you just have to start your day with a thousand calories. I'm starting to hate seeing beans and tomatoes at every buffet around the world. Listen, nobody eats beans with their breakfast except for a handful of British people. That's it. I believe there's probably no pork on this buffet whatsoever. There's a large Muslim community here. It makes sense. So when you see bacon here, it's probably beef bacon. But that doesn't mean it can't be good. Just kidding. That's actually what it means. Beyond that, they have beef sausage, chicken sausage, and then this is the live meat section right here. So we have roasted lamb, lamb chorizo, and chicken chorizo. Right here, they have so many different egg toppings for you to choose from. Finally, and perhaps least exciting of all, they have a yogurt bar. So I'm very excited. There are a lot of new and interesting foods here. I'm gonna get some food. We're gonna sit down and start our day. All right, folks, we have our first round right here. I'm very proud of it. I feel like I have a special talent when it comes to putting plates together that look yummy. I wanna start with debunking the myth that beef bacon tastes good. Right here, we have the beef bacon. It looks pretty close to normal bacon, at least in color. I don't know what they've done to it, but let's try it out. That's pretty good. That's about as good as beef bacon gets. Right here, we have some dim sum. We have green flavored and yellow flavored. Now, I'm hoping this is not a little triangle of cheese. Let me try it out. Nope, but what is that? I have no idea. I could go ask, I'm not going to. What I noticed too is that even though this is dim sum, some people might eat it with soy sauce. Here, they have about eight different options for dips and none of them are soy sauce. This is what they recommended, a sweet chili sauce. Give it a little bit of a dip and try it out. Mm. It tastes like a classic Thai sweet chili sauce. It's very nice. It's almost overwhelming though. I can't really taste the dim sum. I just know it's there. I can feel the pressure. Mm. Mm. Very nice, moist, bouncy, delicious. I like it. Here, we have something I've never tried before. You know, this is a country that loves noodles in different forms, whether they're wheat, whether they're rice. And so right here, they've taken a noodle and they've put it into a log format. And so it's like a little log of noodles. It kind of reminds me of Vietnamese an hoi. No, is that the right word? Nearly. Cheers. Mm, very nice little chicken in there, and there's very spicy curry. It is a lot of spice for morning time, but I like it. So this is course number one, but there's a lot more I want to see. Let's keep moving. I couldn't resist. We're back here at the noodle bar. I have to try some of these noodles. They look impressive. Hello, noodle men. Hi. Which noodle would you recommend? You can try the, the flat noodle. Okay, let's yep. do it. He says flat rice noodle. So he's going to put some of that into this bowl right here. Could I please put in shrimp and some fish balls? Maybe just some mushrooms. Is it a little bit of a dip in the blanching basket? So for broth, they have two options. They have prawn and they have chicken. I think I'm going to go prawn. Our basket's almost finished. And then we're going with that prawn broth. Fried shallots and some spring onion. Thank you very much, sir. That looks fantastic. I cannot get more items. I cannot delay because this is a very delicate soup. These rice noodles at any moment could expand, get oversaturated, and become completely useless. If you look at like an egg noodle, that's like the Ronda Rousey of noodles. You can do whatever you want to it. It's going to be fine. Punch it in the face. Wait, what? No. They can go a few rounds. That's what I'm saying. But these are like super delicate. All right, let's try it out. Oh, prawn broth was a bold choice. It's very intense, salty, and it certainly tastes of prawn. It tastes even a little bit fermented. This soup, you gotta be fast if you're gonna eat this in the right state. Otherwise, if more than a couple minutes goes by, the noodles are gonna turn to mush. There'll be nothing left. It's like that tragic video of a raccoon that has cotton candy and it tries to get it wet and then it disappears. It'll be like that. Ah! 
that is the breakfast buffet. That is $30. But next, I'm gonna be showing you my room. Now, my room costs around $450 a day. It's not cheap, but when you see how much you get for $450, it's gonna blow your freaking mind. Let's go take a look. Boom. Right here is the entryway, and guys, check it out. A guest bathroom. This is good for you and for your guest. In case there's a surprise, Emergency, you don't have to smell each other. Here we have a huge living room, couch, television. Every hotel should have this. You come, you've been traveling, you're hungry, and they have, um, whatever this is. Back over here, we have a desk over here, a dining table, and then right here, they have this huge, cool case. This is full of food and snacks. Here, we've got some Tito's, some whiskey, and some other whiskey. Hidden here beneath the coffee maker is the refrigerator. Boom, partially stocked. In case you need to celebrate, they even have a tiny bottle of champagne. Very cool. Right now, we're entering the master bedroom. Whoosh, king bed, plush sheets. And then if you're traveling with a lady, she will love this, a giant walk-in closet. Plenty of space for all your suitcases, and right here, a vanity where you can powder your nose. As we head further down, we find the most unnecessary room in this place, the spa room. I've never seen this before. They literally have a room with a bed for you to get a massage. If you're cheap, it can also be a guest bed. Do one. And then across from the massage room, we have the master bathroom. Take a look at this toilet. Hold on, usually it opens. Hey. Well, hello there. When you sit down, the seats are heated. Oh, making sounds. Front cleansing? I can cleanse the front. As a man, I've never done that before. I don't think we can record this anymore. So right here we have the room service menu and I am a big fan of this. They don't make you scan some kind of bullshit QR code and they've got pictures. First of all, for lunch, I'm gonna need a little bit of an appetizer. Oh, what's this? Caviar with champagne? Why, yes. We've got buckwheat bellinis and traditional accompaniments. It's only 30 grams, it's almost $300, definitely starting with that. After caviar, you can get a Boston Lobster Nasi Lemak. Nasi Lemak is like the national dish of Malaysia. Coconut rice, but here they paired it with the best lobster in the world, the main lobster, which is, huh? Well, this one's from Boston. Maybe it talks like the family guy. Oh boy, I gotta tell you, that, that, that sounds awful. The other most expensive thing I could find is the Sanchoku Wagyu Tomahawk. A bit over two pounds. This is coming in at $305. This is absolutely gonna be the most expensive round of room service I've ever ordered in my life. Let's do it. Alas, our food is here. I can't wait to see it. Let's go. Well, hello, come on in. We have multiple carts coming in. Oh my gosh, lots of food. I see the champagne. I think I see some steak. Yep, thank you. Right here we have our giant tomahawk. Ooh, that looks good. Boom. All right, folks, right here we have the biggest room service order I've ever had in my life. It is coming in at $691. This steak is calling my name. It looks delicious. It's gigantic. If you went to a fancy restaurant, this slice of steak would be your steak. Cheers. Mm, oh, yeah. That's delicious. I mean, you can taste these herbs that they've hit it with afterwards, and then it tastes like they've cooked it with plenty of butter. Five, five. A solid eight out of 10, like me when I was in high school. Here's a picture of me in high school. Yeah, that's an eight out of 10. I need something to wash this down. How about some champagne? With my luck, I'm gonna break one of the light fixtures that are gonna make me pay for it. It looks like it's coming out already. Oh, God. Cheers. Today, we celebrate life. And eggs that have been scooped out of a dead fish. Caviar. I've never seen a caviar presentation like this. They have all these little flavor piles, but I don't know really what they are. Here's a yellow flavor pile. Let's try that out. I, I don't know, shaved egg yolk? I'm supposed to be a food expert. Here, the caviar. Beautiful. I'm gonna take a little bit of a scoop. Real nice, low salty, low briny, full of flavor, oily, I love it. But now, I'm gonna take everything they've given to me here and make a little sandwich, put some cream, hit it with a little bit of egg, hit it with another type of egg, the egg white, hit it with a little bit of onion, and now I've ruined the whole thing. Hit it with a little bit of parsley, that's gorgeous. This is what the richest of the rich eat when they need a little pick-me-up. Hey, hungry? Need a $300 caviar set? Cheers. I don't hate that, that's really good. An amazing mix of flavors, even the onion playing in there, the cream, oof, that stole my heart. That is absolutely delicious. 10 out of 10. 
I only ordered this one because it had truffle on top and I love burgers. Alas, we have one final meal. This is nasi lemak. Nasi lemak can be eaten with many different types of protein. It is rarely eaten with a Boston lobster. Now, I'm not even sure why they call it a Boston lobster. Recently, I was with my man Jacob Knowles in Maine where he's actually trapping lobsters. Those lobsters he traps, some of those end up all around the world. And it's amazing to know that I was where these are caught and that this thing was flown here probably in first class so it could be on my plate. Correction, so that half of it could be on my plate. Cheers. Mm -hmm. That's the good stuff. It looks like normal rice, but it has a delicious coconut flavor and a hint of pandan as well. Let's break into this beautiful lobster. Look at this beautiful sauce that they put on here. I'm gonna put some of the tail on the rice. Let's try it out. Oh my God, that is 10 out of 10. In the past, there's no way that somebody thought to combine Malaysian cooking techniques and ingredients and sauces with seafood from the Atlantic. This is the ultimate collaboration. This sauce, this sambal is so good, you could put it on a car bomb and it would still be delicious. And you know that we don't have a car bomb on us because they checked when we entered the hotel. So I won't get to test that. All in all, I gotta say, uh, a pricey meal, but nothing here was extremely disappointing. This is only lunch. We still have one more meal to go. I'm gonna go to the nicest restaurant that I can find in this hotel, and I'm gonna order the most expensive thing on their menu. Let's go. Behind me, our restaurant for tonight. This is the most expensive restaurant in this building. It's known as Sushi Taka Ushi. I believe it is a Japanese restaurant, and it is on the Michelin Guide for 2023. I have reserved a private room. Let's go inside and see what the menu looks like. Right, guys, take a look at this. They have a meat fridge just hanging out here. A, a fridge full of meat. I thought it was a meat vending machine at first. Very exciting. All right, private room for one. Take a look. Very minimalist, like my thoughts. All right, folks, let's break down this menu because it is all over the place. I want it expensive. They have expensive. Actually, they finally have something that's a little bit too rich for my blood. This right here, the Harlan Estate Special Donabe Rice. For this clay pot rice, it costs over $2,000 for rice and meat and stuff. Can't do it. I'm gonna start with a couple of simple things that look fascinating to me. And here, these are Japanese style crustless sandwiches. I'm gonna go with the Wagyu Katsu Sendo. Then I'm also gonna go with this, an uni Wagyu burger. There's beef and there's uni. Sea urchin gonads. Check it out, course one is here and it looks amazing. So this is milk bread, they call it. It is crustless, though it is not made crustless. They have to make it and then cut off the crust. I went to a factory where they do that and you might be wondering, what do they do with all the crust? Well, they feed it to pigs. No, not me, other pigs. So this is a wagyu katsu, which means it's been kind of fried on the outside. They have some panko crumbs on there. Gotta eat it while it's hot, let's go for it. Mm, that is decadent. The bread itself, I mean, it's so thin, there's almost no purpose to the bread, except it creates a handle with which you can hold the meat. The meat's been fried, so as you bite through it, you can feel that crunchy coating on the outside, and it is decadent, oily, juicy, and rich. Plus, there's some sauce in there, it's a little bit tangy to cut through all that heaviness. It's very nice. Oh, man. One by one, the Japanese are taking every food from around the world and perfecting it. What's gonna be next? Beef pho, pad thai, pop tarts. Are they gonna perfect the pop tarts? I will tell you one thing. This is my first time having a $53 sandwich. But when we're talking expensive, this burger right here is 75 bucks. So this is a beef patty. They put some tangy sauce on there already, some lettuce underneath. And then I have one thing I don't agree with here visually. And look at this. Piles and piles and piles of uni. And how much uni am I? given this much. Somehow I'm gonna deal with it. So I'm gonna carefully take the uni. So I'm gonna put it on top of the burger. Now this is Hokkaido uni from Northern Japan. Once you put it on there and spread it out, it seems like a pretty good amount. Put the rice bun on top. Cheers. Well, it's unique, that's for sure. I find the burger patty to be okay. It's almost like a Salisbury steak. It's not like, you know, a classic American beefy burger. The addition of the uni on there, it just makes it slightly more oceanic, a little bit briny, but I don't think uni really belongs on a burger. Uni doesn't belong on that many things at all, to be frank. Overall, it's a good attempt. It's something only a visionary could create, but if I had to choose between these two, definitely I'm going with the Sando all day. This is course one, and we have one more course to go. Am I gonna order that clay pot for $2,000? Absolutely not. Let's get some steak. 
Ladies and gentlemen, right here we have the final course of today and it looks beautiful. I ordered a steak. They didn't ask if I want asparagus or mushrooms or mashed potatoes. They just brought a steak. I tried getting the most expensive steak, but they don't have it. Actually, for their aged steak, you have to plan ahead one month. Imagine that. One month ahead of time, you have to call them, tell them you want the steak, and then they will give it to you. But I did not do that. I planned ahead by about three minutes. So this is what they have. A 300 gram steak that costs $250. What's interesting is they didn't even ask me how I wanted it cooked. They didn't ask me about the temp. They just cooked it to a medium. That was their preference, so I'm going with it. I'm gonna try this middle piece right here. This looks juicy, soft, and tender. Really similar to what was already in our sandwich. Let's go for it, baby. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, it's almost too much. It's salty, rich, easy, oily, like the interspersed fat within is just gushing out every time you take a bite, but then it's smoky too. Is that worth 250 bucks? Tough call. You know, when I was in Kobe, Kobe. When I was in Kobe, Japan, I had a 200 gram steak. It cost $200, but the chef made it right in front of you and I was in actual Japan. This is a similar experience, but more meat and no chef and I'm not in Japan. All in all, I gotta say thumbs up to this restaurant. I enjoyed the food, but if you come here, call ahead by one month and make sure they have all the food you want. From here, I'm gonna step outside, add up everything we ate today and see if I spent over $1,000 on dining. The breakfast buffet, the room, the room service, and the dinner. The total of all those things together are this much money. Today was very shocking to me for a few reasons. One is that I found this hotel to be very rangy. By that I mean, they have some of the most expensive food I've seen anywhere. Room service that can cost hundreds of dollars if you want it to. But then you look at the room itself, only 450 for a lot of space. I mean, I have my own massage table slash bed my wife will make me sleep on if she's mad at me. It seems I may have blown my whole budget on this one episode, but man, did it seem worth it. At least one while I was eating that caviar. Next up, we're taking a more balanced approach to unlimited eating, judging this city's cheapest <laughs> and most expensive buffet. The most expensive food at this buffet, let's go for it. Then deciding which one has given me the most bang for my buck. Wait a minute, I should talk to a therapist about that. It all starts with a beautiful buffet that costs less than a cup of coffee. Buffets, they're a great way to stretch your dollar. They're also a great way to try and sample a bunch of different foods. But no matter the, yeah. But no matter the buffet, they still have to make money. So how do these two buffets do it? Well, let's go and find out. Right now we're headed to the cheap buffet. Our first buffet behind me, it's called Non Corner, and I believe it was established in 1983. That or that might be the address. What's astounding about this place is you can come here, eat all you want to eat, and it's only going to cost you $3.20. That gets me excited and it makes me a little bit scared because they still have to make money. So are they skimping on ingredients? What could they possibly be doing or serving in order to still make a profit off that very cheap price? We're going to go inside and see for ourselves what they've got. All right, we are entering now. Boom, fountain. Not bad. I believe this is the man behind Don Corner. Hopefully, I'll get to meet him soon. Let's head inside. Right here is the buffet, and they've got about 25 to 30 items. For $3.20, they could have five items. I'd still be pretty happy. They have a soup. It's like a sour laksa. This smells pungent, but it smells good at the same time. Reminds me of some good fishy Vietnamese soup. Right here, we have beef lung. It looks like they smothered it with delicious sauces, and they've made it taste good. Here we have fried tofu. We have seafood, even. What kind of buffet that costs $3 has crab claws? Are they packed with meat? No, absolutely not. But at least if you chew on it, you can get the flavor of crab. Nice. Right here you can see fried fish of many kinds. And we have fried chicken right here. As we move down, we have a variety of curries or braised fishes and seafoods and sauces. We have a bunch of vegetables here, not interested. As we get further down, we've got the sauces. Nobody does sauce better than Malaysia. Except for maybe Indonesia. Now you guys fight about that in the comments. Uh, we have soy sauce, we have this big, thick, delicious sambal sauce. Right now, I want to get course number one, sit down and eat. For this soup, you need to put the noodles in first. Right here, we have some delicious rice noodles, very bouncy. I'm going to hit that with a little bit of onion. Look at that. Oh, it's like a fish sludge. Next, I got to get some of this beef lump. They put a little bit of lettuce on top to make everything look fresh. I like it. I like fried tofu, especially with a good dipping sauce. And I got to try some of this fried chicken. Course one, let's get into it. Right here, we have our soup and noodles. Really, what it looks like is kind of a fish stock that's been boiling since 1983. Let's just try the broth to begin with. Oh wow, spicy, savory, super fishy, but in a good way. And there's a lot of bones. Do not scoop this up for your three-year-old. Give it to them and leave the room. They will perish. Here we have some chunks, some broth, onions, and noodles. Very sour. There's meat in there, but it's almost just like tiny meat particles floating about the broth. 
Mm. This is a cleverly put together dish and it tastes delicious. Over here, this plate is astounding. This is a crunchy fried tofu. Back in the day when I was dieting and I didn't know many recipes, I would oven bake tofu and then dip it in honey mustard. It's delicious. I was a soy boy. Cheers. Now I'm a soy man. It doesn't have a ton of flavor, it has a ton of crunch. What it needs is a little bit of sambal. There's fermented shrimp paste in here, and this is perfect if your tofu doesn't have enough kick. It's got flavor now, holy cow, holy cow. Very spicy, a little sweet, super salty. Right here we have the beef lung. The lung is kind of nice and chewy, but then around that there's just so much flavor. It's sweet, it's savory, it's sour, it's awesome. That's incredible. And last right here, we have the fried chicken. It's got a nice orange marinade on the outside that's dyed it this pleasant color. Cheers. Mm. Crunchy on the outside, juicy on the inside. And these are good chunks too. That's beautiful breast meat. I love breast meat. They won my heart already. Our expensive buffet is gonna have to be 20 times better than this if they're gonna get the most bang for my buck. In a moment, I'm gonna get some more food, but first I have to interview the owner to learn more about this place. I'm here with Mr. Boom, owner of this buffet. Sir, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's really incredible how much value you can get here for the money, because I saw, okay, it's a little bit more than $3. It's just gonna be like vegetables, noodles, rice, but you have a lot of meat. Is this a charity or are you actually making money? That's a good question. So I go on volume where I make a little bit of money and balance the charity. What is the most expensive thing in the menu? Oh, the meat item. And then ikan bakar. Is that fish? Is that beef? What fish. is that? That's fish. So that is the main attraction on uh, lunch. Right here we come to the grilling station. They just put these fish on here. The fish are wrapped in banana leaves and they are bubbling away. How long will it take the fish to cook? Normally it takes around 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, that's a long time? You say your business strategy is to get volume, lots yes. of people. How many people are coming in here each day? 400 to 500 people in the lunch crowd, and then I got four, five, six buses coming in. Place is nice, food is cheap, finger licking good. This is vegetable tutur. It is basically a vegetable dough that's fried. It's beautiful. You like this one? Ah, uh, very much. Who doesn't like fried food? Come on. I noticed that if people want to, they can also have their wedding reception here. Yes, every weekend from Friday to Sunday, public holiday is packed. Well, sir, I regret to say I've already had my wedding, but perhaps one day when I renew my vows, I could come back. Please do. Cheap and good. Cheap and good. That's what I like. Guys, check it out. We've come to the bread frying station right here. We have our dough. The dough's already been flattened out. He gives it a little bit of a whack, and then he gently eases it over here into the oil. In India, when I've had this type of thing, it's called puri. But here it's called roti madura. Look at how it gets big and it puffs up as he fries it. This looks delicious. This is going to be perfect for soaking on some stew or gravy. Let's get to round two. Step one, this is beef kima. That looks delicious. Trying to grab some of that freshly fried bread. Here we have our fried chuchor. Oh, lots of brown colors. It's a brown theme on this one. And the last we have that fish that looks perfect. Let's go eat. Look, I did get silverware because I'm going to eat the Malay way with my thingies. Well, with this hand in particular. This hand is for other naughty things. Right here, fried stuff. It looks real good. Mm, well seasoned, very delicious, well spicy. It's just like a spongy little veggie fried thing. Speaking of being fried, we also have the bread. Look at that, it's like a soft pillow. I wanna lay my head down on this at night and have dreams about carbohydrates. This is destined for our beef kima over here. Mm, that's really good. It's got tons of spices like a curry, but it has some of that stewed beef essence. It's very delicious. I kinda wish I had a spoon. Solved it. Right here we have that fish we were waiting for. It's caked in this beautiful sauce. And then I have an additional sauce. This is like a sweet soy sauce flavored with onions and chilies in there. Oh, that's a good sauce. It's light, it's sweet, it's a little bit spicy. The fish is a little bit fishy, but people don't mind the fish flavor here. You go to the West and people are like, my fish better not taste like fish. It better taste like nothing. There's one food that was made famous by the owner of this place. He is Mr. Boom, and his famous food is the roti boom. Let's go check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Hussein. He's about to make the roti boom. He starts with a dough. He puts some butter on top of it. He slathers it. He whips it around, making it bigger and bigger and bigger. And then he shrinks it down, wraps it up, and then that, that that's it. That's the dough part. That is going to make it incredibly flaky once it's finally cooked. Next, he puts some butter on the tawa, and he puts the dough on top of that. Everything so far has been fantastic, but what is something you're really proud of? I'm proud of my roti boom, 1983. I implement the roti boom. It's a small prata, and the name boom comes from me. So I'm the founder of roti boom. And is that a fried roti? A more or less like a prata, more or less a like roti china, but different version with more ingredients. Egg and butter inside to make it more crispy and nice. Here we go with the flip. It looks incredible. Golden brown, and now frying on the other side. Boom, he takes it out, he smashes it, he puts it in the basket. And take a look at that. Soft, nice, and maybe even burning his fingertips. Right here, our final dish. So the first one, the chef uh, kind of 
the less today. So I'm gonna put that one to the side. This one though, it's still blazing hot. It's just crispy, flaky bread with a load of butter infused. I'm gonna try it out plain just like this. Cheers. <laughs> oh my god, that's good. Like eating fresh baked biscuits. It's flaky, it's buttery, it's soft, it's steaming, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you get a little bit of a show, you know? The. Boom! What are you. Did you get it on camera? Yeah, it's pretty epic. This, I love it. But this marks the end of this buffet. And now we will transition to the most expensive buffet we could find in Malaysia. They are gonna have to work real hard to beat this place. We have come to our second and final destination here at Shangri-La Hotel in Kuala Lumpur inside Lemon Garden. That is the name of their buffet. It is the most expensive buffet we could find in this city. Let's head there now. Just in this one buffet, there are over 200 items, including fresh seafood. So you might be wondering, what about the price? Well, the price is just over $42. Let me come show you now. There is so much here, I don't even know where to begin. Luckily, they've categorized it into different regions. First of all, we have Chinese cuisine, we have Malay and Indian cuisine. Over here, we have Western and Italian cuisine, and then we have desserts, too. Let's go this way and work our way over, starting with Chinese cuisine. Section one, soup. This is double boiled white radish with chicken soup. Okay, listen, don't start with this. This is good if you're like sick or something, but then don't come to a buffet. I'm gonna skip the soup and go over here. All right, right here, they have a fish head. Amazing that the fish head is remaining because people here in Malaysia love fish head soup so much. So right here we've got roasted duck. I'm gonna throw some of this on my plate. Here they have Mongolian sauce fried chicken. That actually looks fantastic, but a bit too basic. They have fried rice. You have to have a carby base, but this is no average fried rice. It is covered with these fried silver anchovies. I can't go to a buffet without getting mantau, Chinese fried bread. That is the Chinese section on my plate. Let's keep moving. Here we have creeped into the Malay and Indian cuisine section. Right here we have a vegetable martabak. It's almost like a fried sandwich, but with kind of a roti instead of bread on the outside. Right here we've got the satay. We've just run out of chicken saute up, but we have beef right here. I am a big fan of beef, so no worries about that. And then don't forget to get some sauce. I mean, where's the sauce container? Ah, thank you. Some angel just came from the crowd and gave me a bowl for my sauce. Right here, we have a delicious peanut sauce. That's exactly what you want to have. All right, we have our first round right here. Let's go eat. Boom. We have all shades of brown here right now. We'll have to get a little bit of color next time. I'm going to start with this. This is sauté. You take that, you've drowned it in peanut sauce like this. Cheers. The meat is seasoned beautifully. Tons of spices. I can taste lemongrass in there. And then, of course, the peanut sauce, also spicy, savory, and just full of rich peanutty goodness. This is a vegetable martabak. The martabak, mart, 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 mart. Rick and Morty? The Rick and Mortabak is a very special street food here in Malaysia. I've even seen it in Mombasa when I was traveling in Kenya. Let's try it out. Delicious, beautifully spiced, it tastes like Indian food. Here's the truth. I'm trying to find interesting foods to show you and include some for myself that I just genuinely like. Like this, a fried Chinese bun. This can be eaten with beautifully moist roasted duck. Mm -hmm. This is course one, let's keep going. I'm here with Chef Mohamed Safi. He is the man in charge when it comes to this buffet. Put her there. My team, we looked for the most expensive buffet that we could find in Kuala Lumpur, and this is it. Yes. Why is this the most expensive buffet? First, our buffet spread is huge. It's more than 200, 300 items. We're getting started with round two here at the seafood station. First up, oh, uh, nobody saw that, right? That one just plummeted to its second death. Here we have crab legs and crab claws. Muscle, something I wish I had more of. Even here, they have like a tiny little scallop. Second one, what we offering on the buffet, the quality of the product, what we are brought in into the yeah, this hotel, an example, I show you the oyster. This is a fresh oyster. Two times a week, we've flown from the US. There's an oyster station over here. Boom. Everyone's using a tweezer, so I'm gonna use my hands. Just don't touch all the oysters. It's pretty simple. The seafood plate is complete. Up there in the seafood line, there is tension in the air. Everyone's all smiles on the outside, but on the inside, they want the best seafood. They're battling it out for who gets the best stuff. Right here, we have a shrimpy. I'm gonna rip the head off like I'm in the WWE. Boom, and just like that, it's naked. Just like me, the first time I went camping. Wait a minute. I should talk to a therapist about that. Cheers. Mm. Chilled, dense, shrimpy, beautiful. Right here we have a mussel. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of lemon. Oh yeah. It's good because it's a mussel, but they didn't do any stuff to it. It's just steamed. Here, half a mud crab. The claw here has been shattered. Either that or this crab got into an awful car accident before they brought it here. Hit it with a little bit of lemon. Cheers. 
it's sweet, it's dense. The claw meat, it is the best of all the meats. Last of all, we have an oyster. A little bit of hit of vinegar. These are freshly shucked, and it should be breathing its last breath right now. Cheers. That's not a bad one. Eating oysters, it's like going on a Tinder date. You just never know what you're gonna get. So that is the seafood. I'm gonna get one more course. Let's go up there and see what else we can find. Some people, they come to a buffet, they pay a lot of money, they just wanna eat the most expensive foods. What is the most expensive food you're serving here? We have a strip loin on the buffet. The carving, we come for you. The whole is come, is around five kilo. It's very nice, juicy. So I just got some good tips from the chef. I asked him, what is the most expensive, valuable thing here? He said this, the roasted beef strip loin. And that's what I'm getting now. You are the man in charge here. What are your responsibilities? The responsibility is to make sure the satisfaction of the every single guest came into this uh, restaurant. They are very satisfied with this food quality. We trying to don't drop the quality. We just trying to move up, move up. I think you're doing great work here. The yes. buffet looks amazing. Yeah. It's a great value for the money. I'm gonna go try some of that expensive sirloin now. Sure. The secret's out. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is our final course right here. And come take a look. Strip loin, big, fat, juicy. There's vegetables, there's stuffing. And there's this right here. This is the mustard the chef just gave me personally. I'm gonna cut a piece. It's pretty soft, pink and juicy. The most expensive food at this buffet. Let's go for it. Oh, look, it's juicy, it's fatty, it's tender. It's an absolute delight. The one thing it lacks is a little bit of flavor. So I'm gonna throw some of the mustard on there. All right, mustard strip loin. It's like hot mustard. It's got some tang, it's got some bite. If you love animals, let me rephrase that. If you love animal parts that have been put into an oven, you will love this. This is fantastic. So that is the most expensive buffet that we can find here in Kuala Lumpur. The chef is a great guy. The team is doing amazing work here. But now I have to go outside and decide which buffet gave me the most bang for my buck. It is gonna be a tough one. Let's figure it out. Boom. Guys, today we went to the cheapest and the most expensive buffets we could find here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And my God, this is perhaps the hardest decision of my life. I feel like I'm choosing between my child and my wife and I don't even have kids yet. So one thing to keep in mind as I choose is I'm not trying to choose the best buffet. I'm trying to choose which buffet gave me the most bang for my buck. In that case, I would have to say it was the cheap buffet. It's hard to outdo a buffet that costs three and a half dollars. At just three and a half dollars, we have our winner. But hold tight because our culinary journey is far from over. From this luxurious hotel, we're hitting the alleyways in a part of the city that lures you in with its enticing street side aromas. I'm talking about Chinatown. Hello, man. Could I, could, could I? Oh, hi. Six years ago, I was roaming these streets searching for five must-try street foods. Well, this time, I did one better. I love it. Prepare for the six must-try street foods of Kuala Lumpur's Chinatown. Boom, we have come to our first location right here. They are serving porridge and also noodles. This is what I love about Asia. You can have noodles any time of the day. This place is called Yui Ki Chi Chung Fun, and I can't wait to have some fun. Let's go in and see what it's all about. Hi there, my name is Sunny. Are you the owner here? Yes. How long have you had the stall here? 80 years. 80 years? You don't look at a day over 70. I mean, from my grandparents' time, I'm the third generation. That makes a lot more sense. Are rice noodles a common breakfast here in Chinatown or in Malaysia? For Chinese, it's considered as a traditional breakfast. Can you tell me how you make it? We serve with gravy or soy sauce. Very simple breakfast. So everything starts right here with the rice noodles. Oh my gosh, then they get chopped up. Chuck those on a plate, and that is our carby base. From here, they're getting drizzled with garlic and onion oil. Here we have a spicy chili sauce and a signature sweet sauce. Pickled green chilies and finally sesame seeds. Let's go try it out. The only thoughts I have is that it's quite carb heavy. For me, I prefer a few eggs for breakfast. What I like here is it's all about flavor. Obviously the rice noodles alone have no flavor, but she's put a couple of powerful sauces on here. I'm gonna try the pickled pepper first. Mm. It's like a Chinese pickled jalapeno. It's got a little bit of heat, but a little bit sweet, a little bit of pickle at the same time. From here, we are gonna destroy this masterpiece and mix all these elements together. Look how soft and delicate these noodles are. Let's throw it back. Cheers. These are very nice noodles. Immediately you're hit with this amazing flavor of the sesame seeds. It's toasty and delicious. And then after that, the heat hits you. It's really a straightforward food. I'm sure there are people that come here every day. They get this, they go about their day. Do you have people who get this every day? So I pressed her and she couldn't really think of anybody who comes here every day. Oh, and then she said her sister does. Haha, -ha, correct. These are wonderful. This is just the start. Let's keep moving. 
Aside from noodles, a second favorite breakfast in these parts is porridge. And here, they have every kind of porridge you can imagine and even a few you could never imagine. Let's go over here and take a look at the menu. First of all, you can just get plain old kanji if you want. Nobody would ever do that. Let's go through the kanji varieties that they have here. Fresh raw fish porridge. That looks like sashimi, it is, but you can put it inside a porridge too. They have crispy innards porridge. They have homemade pork ball porridge, tender drumstick, salted egg, century egg, and then this right here, fresh frog porridge. Let's go in the kitchen and see how it's made. The first thing I see right here is a giant vat of porridge. Look at this big, beautiful cauldron of porridge. That is our canvas, and we're gonna build on top of that. Right here, we have our frog in a package. Looks like it's ready to be smuggled across the border or something. So the wok is being fired up immediately. Right here, we have ginger, chili, and she just squirted some oil in there too. Then she's got her package of frog meat. That hits the pan. Give it a little bit of a mix in the wok. Oh wow, that spice, I smell it from here. Right here we have some fish broth going in that will pair beautifully with our swimming frog. Here they have kind of a thick soy sauce and a chili sauce and even more spicy sauce. Look at this, it's getting caramelized and beautiful. It's dark in color. Boom, toss in the spring onion. Alas, she's putting it on our plate. Pair that with some kanji and we're ready to go. Meal number two coming in at $6. Right here we have the kanji with sesame oil on top to give it a little bit of flavor. Over here we have our frog and a delicious sauce that she's made from a combination of many different ingredients. The woman back there is very charming. She's a nice lady. She seemed like she could speak English well. And then when I asked her some questions, she said, Hi, Vietnamese. <laughs> You're Vietnamese? Oh, xin chào. Xin chào. <laughs> I wish I learned Vietnamese. I want to try just some of the kanji alone. Actually pretty good, savory, delicious, smoky from that sesame oil. Uh-oh, car, will they get through? Very nice. I'm very impressed with people's driving skills here. All right, right here we have our frog. I couldn't clearly see how the frog was sorted out. Like which pieces of frog do I have? This is probably a pelvis. I'm gonna munch the little bit of frog meat on there. It's so soft and tender. It's something between chicken and fish. That's what everybody says. And they say that because it's true. Absolutely delicious. The sauce on here is incredible. It is super salty and very spicy too. So now we're gonna take our frog and other accoutrement, move it into the kanji, and that's gonna flavor that even more. Let's mix that up. Cheers. Oh, it's so good. It's heartwarming. It's full of flavor. If you're somebody who wants to expand your food eating horizon, start with frog legs. It's like an entryway food to get you to more extreme stuff, like how cigarettes are a gateway drug to heroin, I guess. So that is frog porridge. Let's keep moving. Welcome to Nasi Kampung. That means mixed rice. Where's the rice? <laughs> ah, so they keep the rice safe back here. Oh my God, what? Look how much rice that is. I mean, there's no room for anything else. Well, I'm gonna put that down and get another plate. Let's go through what they have here. First of all, shrimp. We've got a fish head and then fish body parts right here. This is something called ketchup chicken. You may remember last time I worked with Guga from Guga Foods, he dry aged a steak and ketchup for a month and it tasted interesting. This, well, it's not exactly the same type of ketchup. It's not exactly dry aged, but I can't resist something called ketchup chicken. That looks real nice. Right here, we have unripe jackfruit. That is like these big blocky pieces. But then there's also chicken feet in there too. I love this. It's something new and beautiful. Oh man, look at this. The sauces are mingling. It's hard to keep them separated. Okay, I'm back to the rice plate. Right here, they have something called tempeh. This is fermented bean curd. Let's see how fermented it actually tastes. I'm gonna take some of that. That should be enough for one round, I hope. How much is all of this? 12. 12. Really? So that's about $2.50 for everything you see here. That's wild. Right here, they brought me some tea. Psych, it's not tea. This is for washing your hands, nice and clean. Right here, the tempeh. This is fermented bean curd. There's a beautiful red color to it. It looks crazily spiced. And it's not meat, it's vegetarian, folks. Let's try it out. Mm -hmm. It has a great texture, wonderful spices and flavor on there, a little bit spicy. It tastes like Korean red chili paste, but very different from a tofu. It has a much meatier texture to it. If for some reason you have to not eat meat, that would be a decent option, at least for a day. So right here we have our ketchup chicken, but this is not made with tomato ketchup. This is made with a dark soy ketchup. That's what I'm told. I mean, look at the color on there. Wow, it's gonna dye my fingers red. Don't put this in your Tupperware. It's gonna be stained for life. Let's try it out. It's delicious. It's so greasy. It's super salty and super sweet. Amazing flavor. I'm gonna take the rest of this apart, lap it up in that sauce. Mm -hmm. The chicken is not hot. In fact, all this food is gonna hang out here on the sidewalk all day. But since it's been sitting out for a while, the texture is very dense, but I still like it. It's kind of like leftover chicken. You know how leftover food sometimes is even better, especially if you have a hangover? Sadly, I don't have a hangover. Wait, but I could get one.
tomorrow, right here at Final Food. This is the unripe jackfruit. If you've never seen a jackfruit, this is what a jackfruit looks like. And when it's unripe, you can actually eat everything inside, not just the fruity part, and that's what this is. It's like between a potato and a lotus root. The texture is unlike anything else you've ever had. It's right on the border of being uneatable, but then it's pleasant at the same time. And it's just taking a bath in this coconut sauce. It's so coconutty, so flavorful. And then right here, look at this, tragic. Every chicken foot has had a manicure. Oh wait, not this one. Look, you can still see the toenail there. I mean, you gotta clean them real good if you're gonna have the toenail still on there. You can see it, it just comes apart pretty easily. Chicken thumb. Huh. I'm being honest here, not a lot of flavor. It's mostly just gelatinous and gooey. All in all, this is a very cool way to experience street food in Malaysia. They have about 25 options there. You just go one by one, pick them out, go to your table, see what you like, see what you don't like. It is perfection. That's course three, let's keep moving. We have come to our next location. This is Lai Fung Beef Noodle, and it looks amazing. I saw in the back they have baskets and baskets of beefy ingredients, and right here they have the menu. Luckily, it's in English. First of all, they have tripe, they have beef balls, they have beef lean meat. What part is that? They have beef leaf tripe noodles. They also have beef tendon, brisket, and then you can just get everything together, and that is what I plan to do right here. Let's go inside and see how it's made. Right here, all these bowls ready to go out. He's making several bowls at one time and then putting in that beautiful beef broth. It looks incredible. They've got like an assembly line going. They're moving so quickly. Hello, ma'am. Could, could, could I, oh, hi. Could I order some noodles? Could I please have the wheat noodle? Yes. And then uh, all the beef parts. Boom, everything starts right here with the wheat noodle. It looks kind of like spaghetti. It might be spaghetti. Step one, blanch the noodles. Dump it out. Step two, we've got two different types of sauce going in. We've got some meat he's just heated up. We've got some greens going in too. And then the broth. Oh, that looks glorious. So right here we have the tripe. And then I believe that is a tendon over there. He's getting piles of that, putting it in the spoon, and he's gonna get that hot with the broth. Bring those organs back to life and throw them in the bowl. Now we've got some lean beef meat over here. A couple of meatballs. And that goes in the bowl as well. Look at this bowl, it is just magical. You can just taste it through the camera, I swear. It looks incredible. Let me get some of that broth. Broth is legit. Fatty, savory, salty. Tastes like perhaps there were some boiled bones in there. And MSG too. I like it, but I have to admit, I think I made a mistake with my noodle choice. They look slightly like egg noodles. I love egg noodles. These are not egg noodles. These are spaghetti. At the last moment, I asked that lady, I go, wait, is that spaghetti? Yes. Oh, it's spaghetti. Yes. With the Chinese soup? Why? I mean, to me, the spaghetti noodle just feels a little bit cheap, but it's in this glorious, like, royal broth, so it's quite a mixture. Let's try it out. It's not quite like an Italian spaghetti. It's got a little more bite to it. I like it. Let's move on to the meat. Let's start with the tripe. It could be glorious or it could be a mouthful of regret. Cheers. It's a pretty good tripe. Clean, slightly bitter, slightly gamey. Right here, that very lean beef. Try that out. Soft, tender, delicious, beautiful, love it. There's so much in here. Balls, oh my God. I've never seen beef balls so small. Processed in all the right ways. Very well seasoned. This is what I'm most excited about right here. The beef tendon. I'm a huge fan of beef tendon, unless they haven't cooked it enough. It's gotta be gelatinous, it's gotta be gooey, it's gotta be falling apart in your mouth. And if they don't boil it enough, it's gonna be a little bit hard and kind of like chalky. Let's see which one this is. Right on the edge. I like it when it's boiled a little bit longer. It's a little bit more gooey, but it is some very respectable tendon. Very nice indeed. It's a good bowl of noodles. I'm kind of surprised because that frog porridge was also six bucks, and that was like tiny little pieces of frog. This is a lot of beef, an incredible treat for six bucks, and a shining example of what you can get here in Chinatown. I love it. We have reached our next destination right behind me, Mi Tariq. Mi means noodle and Tariq means pull. It's a pulled noodle shop, but they're doing so much more than that. Let's go inside and I'll show you. Right here we have knife cut noodles. It looks amazing. Look at this. He's got a big glob of floury dough here and then he just goes strand by strand, launching them into this hot water below. Right now he's cutting some more dough for hand pulled noodles. You're gonna see it right here. Customers, as they walk in, they can see this show live and in person. Every time he pulls the noodles, it is multiplying them by two. It's eight, then it's 16, then 32, and then I lose track after that. Wow, amazing skill. They both are so satisfying to watch. I might have to get both. Should I get hand pulled or knife cut? See, 
He's like, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. Look, sir, boom, put her there. I'm very excited to show you the stuff happening in the front of the house here. A giant dumpling cooking machine. Look at these hand crimped dumplings. He's got some over here too. Two flavors, chicken and beef, and they look delicious. Over here, they have a large pancake. There are so many options. The smells in here, the aroma, it's amazing. I'm definitely gonna get some dumplings too. He just keeps pointing to food and showing me different stuff. Right here, he just cut one in half. This looks like a little stuffed chive pancake. If you hate chives, you will hate this. That's all it is. It's just pure oniony, chivey flavor. I love it. All right, guys, I've opted for the knife cut noodles. Right now they are cooking and he's getting ready to pull them out. Here they go in the bowl, sliding right in. Right here, we have the broth. Beautiful. Boom, some greens go on top. Hit it with a little bit of beef. And then this looks like a chili oil. My God, that could kill an elephant. Yeah, nice and spicy. Guys, this looks incredible. Let's start with the dumplings. These ones are filled with beef. Let's try it out. I'm in heaven, man. It doesn't get better than that. A thick, delicious wrapper on the outside, crunchy on one side, chewy on the other side, then just an explosion of greasy, beefy flavor on the inside. Super spiced, but not spicy. If you want the heat, come over here. This is Szechuan pepper chili oil. Very acceptable, not that brutal. And they've got some vinegar in there too. Let's move over to the noodles. Right here, that Szechuan chili pepper oil, knife cut noodles, beef, and then a delicious broth. Let's try some of that broth. Oh yeah, super savory, salty, fatty. Oh, some of that chili oil is leaking in now. I feel like my throat starts to close. Let's mix this all together. I wanna get that chili oil everywhere. Let me hit some of this beef. Cheers. It tastes like brisket, but not smoked. After a couple minutes, the heat is just like a radiant glow that starts to build up from your core to your extremities. Let's dive in for some of those noodles. I've not had a lot of knife cut noodles, and I just love the skill of this man chopping away at that big brick of dough. Cheers. Mm. It's big, it's thick, there's a lot to it. That noodle's got some bite, that's for sure. Man, the whole dish is just a punch to the face. This is the Mike Tyson of cuisine coming at you with an uppercut. That was amazing. Maybe I should pack it in. I don't think we're gonna do better than this. So that is Chinatown, and that is the best and the most delicious food that you will find in all of Kuala Lumpur. From the street sides all the way to luxury hotels, this city has it all. Tune in next time. If you'd like to see more videos like these, be sure to subscribe to more Best Ever Food Review Show. Otherwise, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace.